Hey guys, and welcome to my review of Black Panther. Sorry this video is a little bit late, I was too busy building this bookshelf and then buying all this cool nerdy stuff for it. Look at it! Look at it, they're amazing! I'm actually waiting on a Cyclops one. I wanted to get a Phoenix one, or a Dark Phoenix, or a White Phoenix or the Crown one. They're like 400 pounds on eBay, even on Amazon. So I was like, you know, maybe next year. But anyways, you don't care about that, you're ready for Black Panther, so let's get into my review. So overall, you have to go see Black Panther. I think director Ryan Coogler did an amazing job bringing Wakanda to life, bringing the characters to life. The film is chock full of characters that are engaging. You care about their beliefs, what they want to achieve. Wakanda was just perfect. Now, I already had like an idea of like what Wakanda would be like when they finally brought it into the MCU, and they just nailed it spot on. You have a villain that actually you kind of root for in a sense, you know, I mean, yeah, he's killing people and you know, you're not rooting for that, but what he believes and what he wants the people and T'Challa to do for Wakanda and just for everyone in the world, you kind of see his point of view and we'll get more into that. But overall, Black Panther, the action sequences, everything, all the actors, everything in this movie was just done so well. And for an introductory film for a new Marvel character, I mean, it doesn't even feel like an introduction film. It, they just nailed it. You have to go see Black Panther. I've only seen it once and I'm already kind of kicking myself as I'm talking about it right now that I haven't gone and seen it again. Just because, you know, building bookshelf and buying toys, but I will get there and I will go see it again. One of the main things in Black Panther is the introductory of Wakanda into the greater MCU. Now we've seen hints of it through other Marvel films, but this is the first time that we as viewers are actually seeing Wakanda. And one of my favorite things about Wakanda is the fact that they have taken the, the West kind of condescending view of Africa and turn that into a camouflage for themselves to hide their highly civilized, highly technologic, highly technologically, highly technolo- Let's see if I can do it. Highly technologically. Ah! I think I got it. Society and keeping it hidden from the world. And they created this futuristic haven that is unrivaled by any other place in the world in the larger MCU. Now Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa slash Black Panther carries the film beautifully. You really see his struggle with what to do with Wakanda. Does he keep it hidden and keep all the tech and vibranium from themselves because they know the world will just go to <laughs> if, they, if they get it? Or does he help the world? Or they, do they use their advanced technology to help other places because they know they can, but you know, there's that fear that in the wrong hands, this vibranium, their technology can cause mass destruction. So you really see the intensity in him as he struggles going back and forth, back and forth, taking the mantle of king. What kind of king does he want to be? How is he gonna lead his people because he is still kind of struggling with the loss of his father and what he wants to do and what is his vision for the new Wakanda? And we have Shuri, who's T'Challa's little sister, and she seriously steals every scene. She was freaking hilarious. She's the mastermind behind the vibranium armor, all the weapons. She is so smart. She kind of puts Tony Stark to shame. Sorry, Tony. But she was an awesome addition. Nakia, who plays his love interest, is also a spy, and she's kicking butt left and right. And she's really kind of pushing T'Challa to be the king that he wants to be, just to be a good king. Now, a little extra tidbit of information for you guys. Nakia in the comic books actually kind of goes down a villainous path. So I'm not sure if the MCU are kind of planning that far ahead. I think they are. We just don't know what they're planning, but she might be taking a dark turn. I think that would kind of play well because we already established that, you know, they had a romance before. They're kind of picking up the romance again. And I think that would be kind of like a cool progression to kind of bring back conflict into their story and what happens between them. And you know what? It also opens up for maybe a, you know, mutant with white hair named Aurora Monroe like, pop in and you know like slide right in next to T'Challa. Just an idea. Just an idea. Okoye was also one of my favorite characters. She leads the door with a female bodyguards for T'Challa and I really liked all their action sequences in the films because they literally fight as if they're in one group. They're completely in unison, you know, helping each other and like where one ends, the other one like pops in and like picks up right where they left off. So I really liked that dynamic in the fight sequences and it actually brought something new that we hadn't seen before. And can we talk about that spear? Because yeah, I need one. Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger because as a villain, I actually sympathize with him. Now what this film did really well is it took a lot of social commentary and things that are happening right now in the world that are prevalent and put it into this film. Killmonger's belief is essentially that Wakanda should be helping everyone else in the world because you know, when he was like over there in the States and like, you know, poor and without technology and all that stuff, he was having a hard life and all these people in Wakanda are kind of living the high life 
And he's like, why are you keeping this for yourselves? You should be sharing this. We can take over the world and show that we are not any less than the people who are in power. And I think that's why it resonated a lot with audiences and people found him as a sympathetic villain because they can actually see his point of view. Now again, he is a villain. So maybe the way he's going about it, not the best way, you know? Not the best way to get things done or maybe the best way to get things done but not the best way to make people happy and ready to kind of like, yeah, let me help you take over the world and kill more people. So I think Michael B. Jordan did a really good job. I think they did a very good arc to this villain because one of the main things you want from a villain is you want them to kind of show what the hero is maybe doing wrong or the, some weakness that they have and because of Killmonger, T'Challa can see now that, you know what, he's kind of right. Wakanda should be helping the rest of the world. Wakanda should be putting ourselves out there, making all this technology available for everyone else because, you know, it can help that person over there and that person over there. Let's not keep it hidden anymore. Let Wakanda stand as a beacon of what everyone else should strive to be. Now, if I had to pick a favorite scene in the entire film, my favorite scene would be the entire casino sequence. I just really thought that was the best scene of the entire movie with T'Challa and Nakia and Okoye basically trying to infiltrate this casino and try and get Ulysses Claw you know like back into Wakanda custody but just the way they go about it was just well done the fight sequence is just everything and then I actually saw this video by the director mentioning the fact that if you paid attention the colors of the characters costumes are red black and green and that's actually the color of the pan-african flag that's just a little insider view from the director himself and I just made that scene like a hundred times better so overall you have to go see Black Panther it will go down as one of the best films in the MCU I left the theater not even thinking that it was kind of like a superhero film. I wasn't even thinking about the superhero stuff. I was thinking about just like, you know, the characters and their beliefs and how they wanted like to change the world. It was just more kind of like a personal film to me versus like, oh yeah, special effect, vibranium suit, claws, you know? I was actually more worried about the characters. They all kind of left a mark on me. So I think that is why Black Panther is doing extraordinarily well. So at the end of the film, T'Challa decides to bring Wakanda out from hiding. They're gonna share their technology, which is perfect because I think in a couple of months, a big purple guy is gonna come and try and take over the world. And it might be handy having some really techie weapons that you know can actually put up a fight, you know, because he has this whole like infinity gauntlet thing going on. And one more thing that I actually really liked about the film, it's nothing official, it's just a thought I had when I was watching the film. Did anyone else really get excited when you realized that Angela Bassett's character's T'Challa's mom, Ramonda, that her hair was white. Did anyone else get a little validation when they were first casting the X-Men movies way back when and they were looking for a storm? Did anyone else really want it to be Angela Bassett? And you're like, she would be the perfect storm! And then extraordinarily disappointed when they cast Halle Berry because that was one of those people. So I kind of felt that the MCU kind of gave like Fox maybe like a little middle finger with like, you know what, you f up! So now we're gonna bring her into our movie and give her white hair again because you know what, we're cool that way. But one of the things I also was thinking about was maybe they're actually kind of hinting that there are these people who have this naturally beautiful white hair in Wakanda, in the world. So you know what, maybe a mutant named Storm isn't too far in the distance. And I think it would be a dream come true if they actually introduced her into the Black Panther movies, you know? Please make it happen. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to click subscribe. And you know what, next time you see me, I might have some more nerdy stuff up on this bookshelf. It needs more. I think I just, <laughs> I want the Jean Grey. <laughs>